Hi, right, folks. We'll give a few more minutes to be able to have more people come on in. I see Dims. I see Emily. I see more folks coming on in. Quiet group today. Almost the end of year, Amy. <laughs> uh, you know, we are not yet in the circle back to the holidays season. Like, we have a few more weeks. Like, come on in. Uh, come on in. It's going to be fine. I'm ready for holidays. <laughs> <laughs> well, this meeting should have, like, you know, we're, we're going to talk about, like, the, hey, how was your KubeCon? Um, we're going to talk about projects moving levels. We might even give some folks some time back. We'll see. Sounds yeah, good. I see. Like, the, like, yeah, nods, things. Mm -hmm. I'll give it like one more minute and then we'll get we'll, we'll kick off. So All right, we've got 27 people here, and that's pretty much what we kick off with, so... Dims, passing to you. There. Um, okay, next slide, please. <laughs> it's the normal welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. You have made it to the meeting. Yes, you're here. Yay! <laughs> TOC members are tracked over in the uh, public meeting doc. Good to see we, don't, we don't need quorum today, so... We can... Nope, we sure don't. Yeah. Um, so uh first item on the agenda one thing that i can think of is uh did folks think about uh, the topics that we talked about in the um toc and uh, the tag um leads uh, so to say a meeting um Yeah, I'll just move on to the, like the uh, normal slide. Here's here's our some right. details around where we're going for. Uh, we're gonna have a transparency report published in early December, but we had like seventeen thousand folks attending, both physically and virtually, and a little under half on site. And uh, again, we've got Cloud Native Security Con coming for February in Seattle. So that's on KubeCon. I'm going to imagine there were several. <laughs> okay, Bob's its favorite one yet. He might be biased. <laughs> Are you still getting kudos on your talk, Bob? That is that why? <laughs> Thanks. So if you if you didn't make it to KubeCon, go watch <laughs> the talk from. Bob Killen, please. Okay, uh, is there anybody here who was in that meeting that I was just talking about and want anything that we need to follow up here? Uh, mostly we were talking about how do we make sure that uh, all the tags are healthy um, and how to you know, send work and people uh, the tags way 
um, so that we can scale um, going forward, uh, given the number of projects that we are uh, seeing that are coming in, how do we make sure that uh, we involve all the tag leadership uh, in the right way? So, you know, it's not enough for just the TOC to scale uh, with bringing in projects, but also all the uh, projects to actually have guidance from tags that they are associated with. Okay, I'm just going to call on people then. <laughs> okay, Emily, did you uh, did you have any thoughts uh, after that meeting? Yeah, so we had a really good long discussion both about better engagement with the tags, better support for the tags and requests from the TOC and execution of their normal data, their normal um, functions. In addition to that, we kind of focused really heavily around the expectations for projects moving um, between phases within the foundation from sandbox to incubation to ensuring that they reach the maturity levels that we're looking for. So um, I'm hoping over the next month there will be a new issue on the repo to kind of summarize what some of those discussions are and create an initial framework for discussion around how do we improve those communications, how do we better measure maturity and set expectations both with tags on requests that are being made to them, but also on projects that are looking to move levels or potentially seeking to hit those uh, milestones at a later date. Sounds good. Uh, Katie, did you have any thoughts about as follow up that we could be doing? Nothing specific. I think like, yeah, it's been echoed before. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, Matt, Ricardo. Yeah, I also didn't have anything to add to what Emily also okay. said. Uh, then let's flip uh, to the other side and see if any of the tag leaders who made it to the meeting. Um, uh, Ricardo, were you there? Yeah, I, no, I wasn't on, in that meeting, so I'm, I'm not really sure when it was. So I'm, okay. I'm not sure if they got the invite. Or, but so. Okay, we need to do better on that next time. Um, but in general, uh, like uh, the topic was around like how do we make sure that uh, the tags are healthy. Um, how, how is your tag doing? Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, we, we need more um, contributors, uh, more people excited about, you know, the specific things that the tags are involved with and, you know, bringing in more projects. Uh, so typically in, in our tag meetings, we get like four or five people in every meeting, right? So we'd like to get that number a little bit higher uh, so people, you know, doing different things. So, yeah, so, so in any way you can help the tax um, grow, that it, the better, the better it is. For sure. Okay, I think we are out of ideas now. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, what did we want to talk about I next? Feel like Bring out like the uh, folks in the room. Um, sure, absolutely. I, I don't remember who it was that really requested being able to say, "Hey, let's do this particular meeting with, um, like, you know, let, let, let's hold this meeting and talk about KubeCon." Um, do you remember? No. I might have been Kathy, but I'm 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 so like <laughs> I'm I'm kind of losing like the uh, who, who might have been. Um, not sure what the questions. Are uh, not... How was your KubeCon there? Yeah, not really. I don't remember that. Open it up to the rest of the room then. Ricardo, go ahead. So how was uh, KubeCon overall? Did we, did we get uh, uh, more participants, more um, attendees than last time? Or, or in general, I haven't read the the report yet, but just wanted to get a sense of what people thought about it. I don't think we could compare it to like the San Diego one um, because that was all in person, right? Uh, but we, so this was like 
about half and half of virtual and physical. I have no idea how it was for the virtual folks, uh, whether uh, were there anyone on the call here who attended virtually? Um, so uh, the the you know the physical one was definitely you know a little bit smaller, um, just going by the size of how many people came to the, the Kubernetes contributor summit. That gi that gives me a uh, you know a comparison. Um, and I was not able to attend uh, some uh, a lot of the sessions, so I was basically walking uh, the booths and uh, trying to meet people and so on. Uh, yes, Bob. Uh, so, do you remember how much how many how many people were there in uh, the San Diego summit, Bob, for Kubernetes contributors? Um, I believe it was close to five hundred. Yeah. Um, but that was also when we were doing the new contributor workshop as part of it, which accounts for about 200. Okay. Um, so, so I think, I think definitely smaller, um, you know, than San Diego, um, is a general feeling. Does that help Ricardo? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're not back to pre pandemic levels yet. Right. Yeah. And I, I think next year doesn't look that great either. So, I mean, it, I mean, it might be similar to this year, right? Because um, there's a right. lot of um, uncertainty in the economy, like with companies laying off people, but, you know, but right. hopefully we can continue, you know, growing the, the ecosystem. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, the, the, the travel policy visa stuff was definitely you know, had its effect, a lot of people from India were not able to get in um, because they couldn't get their visas and, uh, you know, working with the US um, government to get a visa is a big problem for sure. And there wasn't enough time between, um, between the time people got accepted uh, for uh, travel, for for example, for you know students who were um, coming, uh, uh, who who got uh, scholarships to attend, uh, they couldn't make it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. How about the total number of folks? I mean, attended virtually and physically, seventeen k. Is that compare with last one? 17k is the total number half of it were on site yeah i'm talking about the total number compared with the pre-pandemic total number is it more i don't have the data for the pre-pandemic number amy do you remember i uh, don't i don't actually um so like but i know that the, the transparency port will be published um in early december and uh yeah bob has the uh total from San Diego. Bob, passing to you. <laughs> you have this better than I do. <laughs> Why is Bob? Don't <laughs> I, 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 I've had to do a whole lot of trip reports and things like that lately. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I re, if I recall correctly, San Diego was between twelve and 13,000. Um, and that was, you know, in person only. Um, now, it's I've... Uh, if I do recall correctly, that was the highest of any, you know, KubeCon previously. So that was like essentially the peak. Um, I don't think we can really compare in-person numbers to those reasonably just because of, of all the, you know, changes in the grand environment of things in there. Um, like 7K in person my personal opinion is, is is pretty solid. I was expecting a little bit more than than EU, which also is about seven, but still like not bad with everything that happened. Right. Uh, so looking forward, I I think the CFPs for KubeCon EU is closing soonish. Um, then we have the Chicago after that end of this week. Yeah. So. Uh, Liz, do you want to speak up, please? 
<laughs> no worries. Okay, yeah. that, that that is Liz's uh, uh, a contribution. It's like way less traffic in the expo hall in Valencia, probably because there was no need to go through to reach food. Um, yeah. I thought I saw somebody else on mute as well. I, th I think the expo hall was also much bigger than Valencia. So That's what I was going to say. Uh, they spaced it out really uh, broadly between the booths. Okay, Bob, you had a hand. Oh, I was just going to say the, the size of the expo hall was was larger, but other people chimed in and said it. All right. Okay. So, but the people that they got were, were like the right people to get. So it's balance. Right. Um, Jack, I thought you might have unmuted a bit ago. Anything to say? Oh, are you are you talking to me, Amy? Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought I was like the you popped up as like the somebody to be able to come on in. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is the right forum for it, but I was um helping with one of the project booths. And I just felt that the project kiosk area just got really little traffic. I also um, felt like really bad for some of the projects that were like directly facing the back wall. Cause I think like people didn't even know that there were kiosks back there. So um, I think that and again, to give the grain of salt, I also feel like we need to be a little bit more creative in how we position some of these project kiosks because they are kind of the heart of the foundation. Um, and it, it's a shame that like, it, they're kind of tucked away in a corner. Um, so that was, that was one of the things that I experienced uh, because I was staffing it. Um, I think also like one of the things I did and I, you know, I, it was one of those kids I, I didn't ask for permission. I definitely asked for forgiveness, but I had like this pull up banner um, and they were like, oh, you're not supposed to like bring additional uh, marketing materials and all that kind of stuff, which is like totally fine. Um, but in, in this case, when you're tucked away in that corner, like how else do you bring visibility to your project? Um, and then I was asked to take it down, but then there were other projects that weren't asked. So I think just having more clear communication on, on what some of these guidelines are, but I think we just need to come up with a, a different position for the project kiosk because being tucked away in a corner, like they get no visibility. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. I felt the same thing as well, Jack, Jackie. I've put comments over in Slack, uh, not Slack, um, uh, the chat as well, but uh, we, we do know about the issue of the uh, the project booths being kind of like uh, uh, not positioned where they should be, um, and we'll take that back into the team. Thank you. I, I, sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to like complain, but it was just one, it was no. one of those things that I was like, came up. Oh, this absolutely. Is, that's, absolutely. That's part of why we have this meeting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It came no holes barred. Please. I think it's a great, uh, great suggestion. So, yeah. Right. Other things. Uh, how was the day zero events? Um, did folks go to it and was it okay? I think there might be some changes coming down the pike on that. The, the events were whole in the full day and uh, some of the events um they didn't have any um you know it, it didn't cost so folks signed up for it but then pe people didn't end up going there and uh, so there were some issues around that too yes uh less too many day zero events yeah and the people were uh going between the kubernetes contributor summit and the day zero event because you know they had to they had work in both that they had to do. So that was a little bit of a problem too. Okay, that's about it, Amy, on this topic. No, totally fair. Um, I I see Bob still unmuted. Bob, last last chance to be able to weigh in on things. Oh, um, no, that was just my comment on the the too many polo events. Okay. Um, Sorry. Nope. Nope. No worries. No worries. But one of those things where like the uh when the mic is unmuted, it signals to me that you have something to say. 
If you don't have anything to say, that's also fine. Ricardo, final thoughts. Um, yeah, regarding the day zero events, maybe in the future we could think about suggesting, yeah, creating a like cloud native security con type of events, you know, for some of those day zero events. Right. 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 It, I'm like torn on that uh, because, uh, you know, like, and I won't be going to Seattle in February just for the cloud native security con. But if it was part of the conference, maybe I could have gone for a couple of talks. So it's it's a balance between the two, right? Uh, and uh, the other thing also is like we have to try these uh, cons and see how it works, right? Um, and what is the mix of people that we are getting to those? Like, is it more hands-on people? who are on the community side, or is it like folks, uh, more folks from the vendors and people who are looking? So we have to figure out like, what does that balance? Uh, and, uh, you know, yeah. first is like, what do we, what are we planning? And then the other side would be like, who actually shows up, mm -hmm. uh, right, Emily? Yeah, there's a lot of discussions I know I've been involved in and many others in the community about day zero events, Kylo events, the content of the events, um, program selection for those events and scheduling. How does that overlap with the content of KubeCon directly? Um, so we've, if you all have ideas, I would definitely say please suggest them because um, the co-chairs of KubeCon, while we don't have any influence or impact over the colos, we are a voice of the community to kind of uh, surface a lot of these questions or feedback back to the events team to build a better event for all attendees, um, while still balancing the needs of the community as well as our adopters and our end users and all of um, the different individuals that exist within our ecosystem. So any kind of feedback that you have on the colos, if the quality of the content is good, or if you had challenges with some of the content, if tutorials should be moved out or maybe better integrated, um, maybe doing an advanced track, there's all sorts of different suggestions that we've received. Um, and anything else is, is certainly beneficial for us in prioritizing or weighing those moving forward. Yeah, feel free to use the uh, TOC Slack or mailing list, uh, you know, even after this meeting. You, if you think of something or if your coworkers think of other things, you know, please uh, push them to send some feedback our way. All right. With that, we'll jump on into our projects applying move levels. There's a lot in here. Uh -huh. I'll kick us off with Dave, if you're actually available for a voice today. Uh, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm here. And I guess on Artifact Hub, there hasn't been a heck of a lot of activity. I really just probably need to sit down with Matt and for us to decide what to do here, because I feel like it's kind of just been sitting here and we haven't done much for a few meetings. That is a fine action item. To, like the, we are going to go figure this one out. Yes, I feel like I said that last time too, and we didn't. So we just need to actually do that. So I don't say the same thing next time. Well, uh, you've got a couple of weeks. Like the next time we're going to do this is basically like early December. So you got a couple of weeks. All right, perfect. That's perfectly fine. Um, all right, open yurt, passing to Dims, passing to Lee. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. Uh, I've not been able to do much uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, after KubeCon, I ended up going to um, you know the LF member summit as well. So this is the first week back at work. So hopefully I'll go visit all the issues uh, and PRs and see if there are DD docs available. Uh, that's the same with uh, OpenEar, Strimzy, and Kubeflow as well for me. So if you are on any of those projects, please expect me to ping you this week. Harry, any updates? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, come on in. Cool. Yeah, so uh, several updates. And um, first of all, our goal, and uh, right now it's on their public comment period um, with uh, 
more collaborations with maintainers than TOC side, hopefully we can move to road after the public public comment period. And the second update is regarding to several incubation level, um, sorry, applying for incubation level projects, including Kubi Vela and uh, Open Cruise. Um, the maintainers from those two projects already collaborate on the TOC side and, and uh, as well as the tag um, to draft the first version of their due diligence doc. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm still looking at the, the documentation and uh, take the review. And in the meantime, they are also uh, scheduling and user interviews and the timeline about, about that interview should be uh, late in November and uh, early December. So hopefully we can finish all of the interviews during that period of time. Yep, that, that's all I, I have for now. That was great. That actually pulls us all the way through um, Blux, which is Matt Farina. Um, and that one's actually in public comment. And uh, Matt, you and I will chat about that today. Sounds good to me. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So one idea that, that yes. had, uh, you know some of us were thinking about was, hey, we have two projects going out at the same, around the same time. Let's do something together, right? Like, you know, just to show that we are not kingmakers and like we, um, you know, and we are putting out two projects in the same space. Uh, so maybe we can do something together there. Yeah, no worries. I mean, like the we we like Argo and 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 Flux seem to be moving like the pretty much like exactly the same space. Right. Um, and uh, as I noted in chat, the twenty third is the vote day for Argo. So nice. Uh, all right, we've got Cryo, Kata, Cilium, and Falco. Um, Cryo, I know, Dems, you're, you're, you're just getting back to the office, but talk to us about where, where Cryo's. And Kathy, go ahead. Uh, the Cryo, I've been following the work um, uh, because of my uh, involvement in Signal, uh, for sure, uh, keeping tabs on them. and But I have to go back to them uh, look at the issue, look at the DD docs and get started on that. Kathy? Yeah. So for the, yeah, so cryo, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, things, yeah, I think in the next time when we schedule a meeting, yeah, we can schedule a meeting with them. Um, yeah, I was assigned to that too. And for the Kata project, um, the, um, they're starting to update their existing DD mm -hmm. and uh, um, I think also I, I was on standby for jury duty this week. So um, yeah, I'm going to schedule a meeting with them um, for next week or, or if after things settles down for this week. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Amy, did you want to give us a refresher about the differences between the incubation and the graduation? Yeah. In subtle things. We, if we could all use a refresher, right? Oh, sure. So the focus is really around like the uh, the um like getting like a really in depth um due diligence around moving into incubation. Incubation is kind of like the the place that we've really said is like we should spend time to be able to make sure that this project is really ready for this. Graduation isn't is working being able to make sure that it is updated. Um, and the way that we've thought about this in the past is the graduated projects, the ones that we say, the TOC says you can use this in production. Like this, this is strong enough to be able to maintain in production. And Emily, I'm gonna to look to you to be able to like correct any of the words if I've said bad words. No, you're good. Cool. Um, and in fact, I can provide an update on Cilium and Falco since both Perfect. of those are applying for graduation. <laughs> um, so Katie and I have already engaged with uh, the Cilium project to put in a request for them to refresh their due diligence document um, to be comprehensive, mm. updating it with the current state of the project, leveraging the new DD template as of July of this year, and covering the graduate graduation exit criteria with a list of potential adopters to choose from. Um, and we've received confirmation back from the project that they've got it and they're running with it. And the same thing for Falco, exactly the same request, refreshing the DD doc, um, covering graduation criteria, adopters list. So we're moving forward fairly well um, and there doesn't seem to be any concerns at this time. That is super. Um, any updates around Falco? Or no, you just got Falco, that, that's all good, yep. okay. 
Um, all right. Anything else that we haven't covered today? Uh, I saw uh, a comment in chat about how Flux completed two week public comment period yesterday. Yes. And I need to go like uh, approve with uh, Matt Farina to be able to kick off a vote. So, right. hold, please. Um, so I I think we we might want second TOC member on the GRPC and CADA. Uh, right. Um, so uh, anyone? I can do Keda. Keda, yes. Ricardo. That's a good fit. Okay, thank you. I will mark that down. Yeah, GRPC. Justin has been carrying it for a long time, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll ask him again um, on on Slack or on the private mailing list for an update. All right. Anything else that we should cover today? Oh, um, Amy, do you want to give people a heads up on the election process kicking off in yeah. early Jan and what they can do to prepare for it? So, uh, it is one, TOC elections are coming. Two, they're coming in January because anything happening over December, everybody just forgets about it and it turns into like the festival the last minute and all of that. So January, January 2nd is when nominations are going to open for TOC. And one of the things that we are thinking about is probably taking one of these meetings to talk about like what the TOC does. Like, so do you want to be on like TOC and like how do all of these pieces come together? Would that be of interest for um, other folks on the call? Uh, I think it will be definitely of interest to the candidates. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, if you're here on this call, you are possibly going to be a, 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 a candidate for TOC. Um, I'll take silence as violent agreement then. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, tracking towards being able to do like uh, nominations will open in January. Um, we'll go through a qualifying period and hopefully be able to have everyone seated by the end of January. So it'll be a tight um, like, you know, election timeline, but it's so much better than trying to be able to open things over the holiday. So and yes, we absolutely do want them to be informed about what they're getting into in here. It's a good time. Yeah. So um, that will be part of the uh, official agenda for the December meeting and looking at calendars that's going to be a december 6th meeting so tags get ready good fun <laughs> yes emily <laughs> that's okay yeah yeah and I'll, always available for questions around like you know hey like toc work like should i should i sign up all of that um yeah happy to be able to answer questions around that yeah same with steering community steering too <laughs> Yeah, there's always fun stuff happening, um, you know, fun in a good way. And it's good fun work. <laughs> it's good work. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so the, the thing that keeps me going is like the the stuff that you end up doing helps so many people. So uh, it's always, uh, you know, it's the journey is worth it. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes, Ricardo. <laughs> course. All right, hearing violent interest from the room, just just overall and specifically, um, I will send everybody back into their day. It's good to see all of you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.